everyone. Happy, very nearly Merry Christmas. So today, it's about six weeks till Christmas and perfect time to make Christmas cake. However, you are really lucky because I have decided to share my family's secret Christmas cake with a bit of a twist. So it's a Kiwi twist and you might be surprised, you may not. But anyway, let's get started because dinner's ready and I need to feed the kids. In here, I have one kilo of fruit and peel, about 50 grams of peel, so just over a kilo of fruit. I actually just like to buy the, the pre-mixed stuff from the supermarkets. I think they do really well now. It's just a mixture of like sultanas and currants and raisins. However, if you really wanted to make up your own mixture, by all means do, as long as it's kilo, it doesn't matter. Also in here, and the reason I can't do this on camera is because I have lovingly prepared this yesterday. It needs a good 20 hours to soak and absorb and mesh all the flavors together, which is really important for your Christmas cake. So I have two teaspoons of vanilla essence, a really large generous tablespoon of golden syrup, and then two teaspoons of Mrs. Rogers mixed spice and Mrs. Rogers ground ginger, all mixed in beautifully with my fruit. Now, the secret ingredient is LMP. You need to put about 300 mils of LMP across your fruit and that will just basically provide you with the wet part of your ingredients. So leave it covered overnight, just on the bench is great. And because you don't want flies or anything else in there, you need to cover it. So you can see how moist this dried fruit now looks. <gasps> and it smells divine. I wish we had smell -o vision but we don't. Never mind. So I'll just pop that aside because now I actually need to, I've got a Christmas cake in the oven by the way, so somewhere in the middle of this I've got to test it and I can show you how I test my cake. I am, have softened butter, which is just normal butter that I've slightly softened in the microwave. Uh, 225 grams of that and remember guys as always I will put the recipe up afterwards and I'll need that later and 225 grams yes of brown sugar now brown sugar is so much nicer than white sugar especially in cakes it gives you that caramel type base which is really important now guys if you've got any questions or comments Please just let me know. Um, we're having a little bit of a, ca uh, of a microphone malfunction, but my cameraman will tell me what it is and I will absolutely do my best to answer, or any comments for that matter. So now, guys, it's gonna get a little bit noisy just as I cream the butter and brown sugar. So you want a really, really nice cream. And you actually need to cream it until the butter is starting to go a whiter colour or a lot lighter than it has started off as. So I just like to mix the brown sugar in completely and then I crank my electric beater up. Well, I need to tell people the fruit recipe again when you come back. Yes, I shall tell you my, uh, my fruit recipe or what I use. Because hey, let's face it, the, uh, the supermarket ones are not bad. So sorry guys, just please bear, please bear with me. Oh, hang on. This is cooking. Now, I'm going to show you how I test my cakes. So I use a very old knitting needle. Because, oh, lucky I cleaned the floor as well. And I've got a really good oven which bleeps at me otherwise. Oh, it looks and smells good. And you just stick the nesting needle in, yep. And it comes out clear with no cake stuck to it. So that means one Christmas cake done. So we wanna just leave that on the bench to cool in the pan. Oh, sorry everybody, that was probably really loud. And I'm leaving my oven on because obviously I'm gonna cook this one. So, sorry, back to loud noisy stuff. But this part's really important. Sorry? 
Yeah, is anybody going away for Christmas or are you all staying at home? We're hoping to get away somewhere, not quite sure where yet. Probably won't. Maybe go visit some family or something like that. Does anybody still make an actual Christmas cake? I think it's quite an old school thing to do now. A lot of people don't like it. Okay, so as you can see, that is getting a lot whiter. Uh, Carol says hi. Hi, Carol. It's getting a lot whiter as I'm whipping that. Now that's about enough. So guys, into that I need to put four eggs, but I need to do it one at a time and just mix it in to make sure that the, the mixture doesn't split. So I'm sorry, I'm nearly finished with the noisy stuff. So one. You don't have to do it 100% in, but 90 is good. What's Carol doing for Christmas? Carol, what are you up to for Christmas? Do you have family over or are you traveling? Going to somebody else's house or? Let us know. Okay, that's two eggs. Whoop. That was a very clumsy way of breaking an egg. I've always wanted to learn to break an egg with one hand. Maybe I'll try and do that next time. Okay, so that's three eggs. And I'm just using just normal size eggs, not extra large or anything. Eggs are eggs. Okay. Now that last one, you want to give it a really good mix. Make sure it is all mixed together. Best you can. Oh, it's not good when your cord's short. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. I just want to give, because we've got lots of people watching, okay. a recap on the fruit. So, so and now everybody, I have... I didn't show you the fruit and I, it was a quick entrance because I pre-soaked my fruit overnight. So let me just dump these and I will show you my fruit. So here I've got a kilo of fruit. Now I just bought the, the kilo of fruit from the supermarket and it had peel in it. So it's a good mixture of currants, sultanas, raisins and it's got lemon and orange peel and it's all ready to go. So that one kilo of fruit, however you could mix it up if you wanted to. If you wanted to take a little bit of that out and add a few almonds, ah, oh, almonds, apricots or dates, I wouldn't put too many in because they can go quite chewy. If you finely dice them they'd be okay. A few cranberries would be nice actually, that would be a really yummy one. But yeah, fruit. Now over top of that, to soak overnight, I've got two teaspoons of vanilla essence, one large tablespoon of golden syrup, two teaspoons of mixed spice, two teaspoons of ground ginger, and 300 mils of LMP. And then you stir that all up, make sure it's all covered, wrap it in like a cling wrap, and leave it on your bench for at least overnight. Uh, 20 hours, 24 hours, you can leave it longer if you wish, but leaving it that, that much just makes all the flavours sort of flow together nicely. It's, oh, it smells yum. I wish you had smell of vision Carol spending time with her partner's family and her family for the day. So it's a big oh, family nice, story. Carol. Lovely. Well, maybe you could make the Christmas cake. Never know. Right, now as you can see guys, I am using a really large bowl. You may have thought, why the heck is she using such a large bowl? Well, you will see, this is the really big cake. So, I have 275 grams of flour. Don't ask me what that is in cups, I don't know. I just, I got one of those fancy scales, so I just use that. And one teaspoon of baking powder. Now don't stress, I will, as always, put the recipe up afterwards. And now into that I just want to fold the fruit. Now I'm just going to give that a very quick stir. I'm going to tip the fruit in. And as you can imagine, it's quite heavy, so I just don't want to drop it. And you really, I'm sorry, you can't see, but look at, now you can. Look at all those good 
juices. You need to get as much of that in as possible. Always scrape. Might get you one more cookie or one extra lick or you never know. Right, that'll do. Now, you just sort of want to fold this. You don't want to whip it in too hard. You just it's a pretty hearty recipe this and as you can see from the mixture, lucky I did use the big bowl, hey. So just sort of, yeah it's starting to come together now. Now the lovely thing with this Christmas cake is that it's magic. There's a little bit of magic. When it gets to this stage what you need to do or actually before this stage, you need to do a little bit of prep. Get some coins, one for each member or person of your family who's going to be there on Christmas Day. Give them a wash, because money's dirty, and wrap them in tin foil. Now, I've done some earlier, it doesn't have to be beautiful tin foil. I'm gonna just honestly, just a piece of tin foil, washed coin, wrap it up. You could choose different amounts, if you wanted, you could choose if you're going overseas, you could wrap up some overseas coins, make it a bit exciting for the kids. In the olden days, they used to use sixpence. And the reason we have to now wrap our money is because it goes green in the cake. So, which is really gross. It also is just, you know, it's always fun to eat tinfoil, not. Anyway. The, the idea is, is that you take the old smelly tea towel and you wrap it around your kid's eyes or whoever's making a wish and they hold the coin and they go, I wish for peace on earth. Yeah, let's face it, no kid's going to wish for that. Mums might though. And then they pop it in and they stir it. And as they stir, they really concentrate on their wish. And my cameraman wants to wish for a Lexus car. So... <laughs> We'll stir that in and pop it in. So you do that for everybody. Stir, pop it in, stir, pop it in. And that way everybody gets to share the magic of the cake, which is kind of fun. Now the, the story goes that if you have a piece of cake and you get your coin back, then your wish is going to come true. As my mum used to do, she used to put all the same coins in, so we would think that it was our coin anyway, which is kind of cool. Right. Now, we're wanting to pop that into a tin. Now, it doesn't matter, guys, what size tin you use. If you want to do a couple of little ones or if you want to half this mixture, you can do so. It's just going to be less cooking time. Just depends on the depth of your actual cake as to how long it cooks. So, or you could do a really big square one like I'm doing and then cut it up and individually ice them for gifts if you like. Um, especially if you know, you know, sort of neighbours or something and you want to give them a present or a gift. Homemade cooking is always a good thing to do. So now you do need to push that cake out to the corners because we don't want a lopsided cake. Now I need to tell you why I have dressed my cake in paper. We need the fruit cake to cook really slow. So it's, been, it's going to cook at 150 degrees anyway. But so that it doesn't burn, you need to line your cake tin, like I've done with my baking paper here, and you need to tie at least three to four pieces of, just newspaper is fine. It kind of makes a little self oven and helps the cake cook evenly. Uh, which is really important because you don't want a burnt bottom or sides. Well, let's face it, no one wants a burnt bottom. But it helps the cake cook evenly. And just use, uh, well, I've just used wool that I had lying around. Any sort of twine or wool, just nothing plastic because obviously it will melt in the oven. But anything, and that will make sure that your cake cooks nice and evenly and will give you a really even texture throughout the whole cake so the whole cake will be moist you're not going to get those crunchy outsides or burnt edges so into the oven he goes for at least an hour on 150 degrees 
Now this cake I've just taken out here, because it is quite deep, it actually took an hour and a half. So you will need to watch it and you do need the time. Now because I'm not going to stay online for an hour and a half, here's one I prepared earlier. Now I want to show you because it's really good to make these cakes at least four if not six weeks in advance, which is why this weekend or tonight you should be making your Christmas cake. Choose an alcohol, a cognac, bourbon. Cindy missed the start, so just oh, um, we'll, so she can watch Cindy, it. I'll do a quick recap, but you can always re-watch our lives. Just once we've once it's finished, just go back and have a look in our posts. It'll be the top video post. So don't stress, it's okay, Cindy. Carlos and says yummy. Great. So yeah, pop pop your alcohol and you need to do this once a week. So if you're gonna make your cake now, do this once a week. Not only does this add flavour. I don't think you can explain the alcohol. No, it does I am, I am. Thank Sorry. you, Mr. Sorry. Cameraman. Sorry. But you're brushing it. So I'm brushing it with alcohol. I'm actually using Contro because I thought that would be nice and it's in my pantry and I don't use it that much. So you brush the whole cake. You want to brush the bottom, you want to brush the sides once a week. Now not only does that create flavour, but it will also keep any mould from growing on your cake. So it's really important. If you can't afford a flavoured, a flavour like Contro or something like that, just use a port or a sherry or something. Not wine, you do need quite a strong alcohol content. But yeah, that is the trick to cakes, uh, especially ones that are going to last a good six weeks like this one. So guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, as per, I will put my recipe up as soon as I've cleaned up the kitchen and uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. If you make a cake, post it for us. Show us. Show us your Christmas cake. I'm actually going to do another post in a couple of weeks or so with a few decoration ideas for your Christmas cake. Uh, I'm hoping to find a traditional homemade marzipan and yeah, show you a few different ideas that I've got tinkling in my brain. So anyway, make your cake, get ready for the icing in a couple of weeks time and very nearly Merry Christmas.